We've all played Gary's Mod, but what if I told you there was an earlier version of Gary's Mod? No, not talking about the betas. I'm talking about Ent Mod by Valve Employee Drunken Fool. Ent Mod allowed you to manipulate entities, entities being objects in game. This was special because levels in Gold Source or Half Life 1 generally were static, unmoving things, and couldn't be changed in real time. If you wanted to move something in a level, you had to know how to use Valve Hammer Editor, have access to the project file for the map you wanted to change, move the objects around in your level, then wait through a compile time to play the level with the objects you moved. It was a very slow and daunting process. This is where EntMod came into play. You could move objects, rotate them, change their color, and much, much more. All in real time. The philosophy behind the mod in the early days was simply to mess around with the maps and troll your friends a bit, but a culture started developing around it. In the summer of 2004, I found myself exploring Half-Life mods and arrived on a mod called Sven Co-op, a game that's a cooperative version of Half-Life 1 that's still active to this day. There in the server browser, I found a slew of servers hosting these Ent maps. I joined a server and was greeted to a massive landscape with just about nothing in it. It was so bizarre. Why did it exist? There was a server admin making a brick floor and my curiosity was instantly piqued. How is he moving these objects? I'd never seen anything like this before. Half-Life mods were always so objective-based and less so sandbox-oriented. This was really far out. I began asking questions about what they were doing and if I could also move objects around. Sadly, this resulted in me being kicked from the server. The admin didn't want people begging for ant mover privileges, and of course being 13, I didn't read the message of the day. Whoops. So eventually I landed in a server where I became friends with the admin and was finally granted Entmover privileges. And what a crazy feeling it was to be given such powers. You could fly around, blow stuff up, and most importantly, see what's underground. You see below these sprawling flat landscapes existed rooms where you'd pick out objects you wanted. You'd copy them and move them to the top side to play with them. We'd make houses, obstacle courses, and so much other stuff. By far my favorite was making houses just so peaceful. There's a variety of Ent maps to play on, all with different styles of entities. By far the most popular Ent map was the better than best Ent map 2 made by Viper. Pit Viper? Something Viper. Ah, there it is. I know, big name for a level, but it had just about everything you could want in it. It featured walls, doors, and stairs for houses, cool objects like vending machines and sand barriers. I really liked the hammock and watchtower. Really cool structures. It also had landmines, which was fun to put in the player spawn, so when someone joined the server, they'd instantly die in a massive explosion. But one of my favorites of all time was Ant Map Lee Houses, a level in Team Fortress Classic that focuses primarily on building houses in the style of British homes. I love this map for how unique all the building pieces are. Sloped rooftops and little nooks for your cozy view. I think what I appreciate most about the level though is the clever usage of Half-Life 1 textures. Being able to play with objects that aren't in a scary research facility is quite refreshing. Also, I really like this carpet. It's so retro and royal. One day in June of 2007, I decided, hey, I'm gonna make my own end map. I called it the crazy end map. I know, super creative. Being a level designer for a couple years at that point, I thought this would be a wonderful challenge. I could make whatever objects I wanted to. And I made planes, little home objects, and my favorite, the buildings, so you can craft a cityscape. The Crazy Ant Map was a unique level in the realm of Ant Mod, but the map never really caught on in the server browser, but we had a fun time with it. In the later years of the 2000s, I think the Sven Co-op team had enough of the Ant Mod servers taking over their game and released an update that sadly broke Ant Mod. Ant Mod was no longer a game mode you could experience in Sven Co-op unless you wanted to downgrade the game to earlier versions, and all the Ant Mod servers dried up. Sad days. You can still play Ant Mod on a variety of old Gold Source games though. I hop into Team Fortress Classic every once in a while to see if anyone's in those servers making things, but usually no one's home. In recent times, me and a few friends created a new Ent map for the Gold Source mod The Specialists, where cityscapes are a big focus. This mod allows you to climb buildings, so we got creative with different types of entities that inspire parkour. We put in massive buildings and cliffs to get you running up walls and fighting each other in a creative environment. 
As fun as the map is, Entmod is no longer as prevalent as it once was, and why would it be? When a superior product like Gary's Mod exists, you might as well play that. However, there's still this fondness I have for Entmod because it was the precursor to sandbox gameplay and Valve products. There really was nothing else like it out there, and the level of creativity I saw during the prime of the mod was so unique to any other game out there at the time. We didn't have Minecraft or Halo 3's Forge mode yet, this was as sandboxy as it got for the people at the time. It really shows you that no matter how rigid and objective oriented a game is, there's players out there who desire to break out of the base game and play with it in new and inventive ways. That's how Entmod really spoke to the people back in those days, and I'll always remember it.